So everybody, here we are, we're back in my world, and are you fed up with your world in vanilla and would like to see something far more interesting and some pretty shaders like this? Yep, well, join me in this video as we're gonna go through how to install fabric and other mods and including these shaders so you can end up with a pretty world like this. Why are the sheep making so much noise? Let's get to it. So the time I'm recording this, the most latest stable version of Minecraft is 1.19.3. There are other snapshots coming out at the moment, but this is the one that we're going to be talking about. So whenever I say 1.19.3, if you're watching this in the future and you're using 1.19.4, 1.20, something like that, just refer to the latest version you are using. And if there are any updates in the future which make this video inaccurate in any way, then please leave a comment below and I'll update the video. However, first of all, what I suggest is download and run and play your latest version. So here we've got 1.19.3, hit the play button, open Minecraft, get the world open, get a, uh, open a new test world and just create a new world like you would normally, just call it test world, open it, make sure you can go in it and then come out of it and then close all this down. That way you've got made sure that your computer is happily running 1.19.3 before we start applying mods and everything to it. So the next thing we do is hop over to a web browser and start downloading mods. So we've now hopped over onto the internet and we're ready to start downloading our mods. The mods that we're gonna be introducing, the first one is gonna be absolutely essential. Uh, this is gonna be like the bedrock this is going to be what you need at the bottom to make all your mods work. We're then going to talk about some library add-ons, which I strongly recommend are useful. I'm then going to go down this list of mods that I have on the left-hand side here. Some of these are some ones that I use that are very easy introductory type mods, easy to get used to and get doing. There's a few down here for videoing. And then down at the end here, we have right the way down to shaders. So you can get that look and feel that I was showing at the beginning. So where are we going to start? Well, there are a number of bases to uh, mods and they run on various different packages. The ones I'm going to be showing you are based on a core called Fabric. And Fabric is very easy to use and very easy to work with. And all you have to do is go to the links and you'll see it's fabricmc.net and go onto this page and you'll see there is a download button here. Hit that download. Um, it's already detected I'm on Windows, so we're going to do a download for Windows and then we're going to open that file and do an install. So once you've uh, downloaded and run that little program attached, you'll get this little tiny window pop up on the screen and it'll allow you to download either a client or a server version. We want to be doing just a client for the moment. We'll do server in another video. And here you can see the latest version of Minecraft here is 1.19.3. Leave the loader version to whatever is current. It will point at your Minecraft folder, wherever that is at the moment. And you can see we've already got the tick box here saying create profile. All you then have to do is quite simply hit the install button and it's done. At this point, you can close that little window. And if you want to check that it's actually installed properly, uh, and I do recommend we actually do this, is we reopen the Minecraft launcher and you'll probably see straight away down here there is a new fabric loader for 1.19.3. If you don't actually see it in there, go up to installations and you can look down the list. You can see I've done this lots of times before with different versions and you'll see 1.19.3. Hit the play button, load, and again, go into your world, the test world that you've created. Make sure you can move around and everything okay. Close that down, come out and then come back uh, to this tutorial and we'll show you the next step of actually installing the main mods. So we have now successfully downloaded and installed Fabric and got that onto our computer and technically you're now running a modded Minecraft. Uh, it doesn't look any different from what you've seen before so far um, but this is where the fun bit actually gets. Now the next two that I'm going to suggest that we download the first one is called Fabric API. The Fabric API is also written by the people who do Fabric and what this does is it allows other mods that work within the game to use utilities written by Fabric. So there's the Fabric core, and then we've got a layer on top of that. Think of this as like an onion. So we've got a Fabric core in the middle, and then the next layer out behind that is the Fabric API. 
And this allows us to do application calls into Fabric and use easier access to those functions. You won't see any difference to the change of the games, but many of the mods do actually use this. And it's just, just easier to just download and install it in the first place. What you'll do is uh, the links will all be down, down in the description below. And what you can do is you can go here and if you're using an older version, you can go on files and you can find an older version to download. But I recommend just hit the download button here. Here we've got Fabric, the latest version 1.19.3. That's important. And hit the download button. That your download will start in a few seconds. One should start. And there we go. It's popped up down the bottom here. Right, before we do anything else with that, the next one we're going to go over to is Maolib. That's the way I pronounce it anyway. And this again is another library which is very often used by other mods. And it will certainly be used by some of the ones that I'm going to be showing you here. So yet again, follow the link, come to this page and hit the download button and we'll download that one as well. I highly recommend that if you use these mod websites, it's worth signing up and logging in or even bookmarking these pages and coming back in the future and checking occasionally to see if the new ones, if new releases of these have come out. So the third one we're going to go for, we're whizzing through these, Mod Menu. Now, this is a great little administrative tool that you're going to be able to use. This will allow you, give you an extra button on your front page, which allows you to go in and see the mods that are installed. And it will also allow you access to some of the configurations of those mods as well. So this is a really good one to install. So these first three, the API, Maolib, and this mod menu are really good. Not all mods interface with the mod menu, but a lot of them are actually doing that now. Certainly ones I write certainly do. So this is another really good one to download and install. So there we go. We'll go through that and get them installed. Okay, we're free down now. Let's work our way down some into the more fun ones now. So these are some ones that I've picked out, which I use pretty much all the time and are really good starter mods. Just get you the feel of installing and downloading and running these types of things. This first one is called FreeCam. This actually allows you to use the spectator mode on your uh, game whilst you're still in survival. Um, I'm not sure if there's any images down the bottom here. I don't think there actually are. But effectively, what you do is with this installed, you hit the F4 key here and you'll pop out and then you can scroll around and move around and see your character where they're actually standing. And um, please note that I am actually going to show you a quick tutorial on all these mods a bit later on. So again, we're going to hit the download button for that one. Nothing special we need to do there. The next one is a really popular one that's used by lots of people and lots of Minecrafters who do videos and that, and that's Mini HUD. This allows you to have a tiny miniature every screen type thing up in the top left hand corner all the time. Very customizable, but it also includes two other really nice features. One is it allows you to see the contents of shulker boxes by um, hovering over them and pressing the shift key. And the other thing you can do is you can also do things like look at light levels on the ground to see where lighting up needs to be done. And there's also lots of other features in there as well. So again, hit the download button, download that one as well. My next favorite one is Item Swapper. This is a fairly new mod, and this has been written by Exuma, uh, who is a YouTuber, and he sort of helped commission the guys to actually get involved in doing this. Um, as you can see, this is one of those mods that's dependent on the Fabric API. So good job we downloaded that before. What this mod does is it allows you to use the R key on your computer to actually go in and look at selections of, of items that are in your inventory that are of a similar type. It just allows really quick um, management of your inventory. So you don't have to press the E key, go in, select parts, put them in your hotbar, come out again. You can literally do it on the move, on the go. So um, this is one that I definitely recommend. The next two that I'm going to suggest are ones that are really good if you're getting into much larger builds, 
or you've been doing lots of larger builds in vanilla already and you want to do something a bit bigger in here as well and you may have actually seen lots of youtubers and streamers um, using a product called lightmatica and what lightmatica is is it is the ability of bringing in schematics or drawings and they appear almost ghost-like within your game and allows you to place blocks where you've done them so this means what you can do is you can go away design uh, a build in creative and then come into survival and build it in that in, build it brick for brick block for block exactly the same and it also means that it also gives you the imagery to be able to see what you've actually done so i do a lot of big builds like that so i actually use this quite a lot so it's another one that i download and install the next one that i also download and use quite a bit is the replay mod and this is one that you've probably seen in lots of youtube videos where you get that third person perspective of the character walking across the screen and running around jumping and doing all sorts of bits and pieces or even seeing the mining underneath the ground um, this is a much more complex and would be might need a much longer video a bit like like massacre to explain exactly how this works but it's certainly one that i use in creating my own videos so if you're interested in making your own videos this is definitely one that's worth downloading as well. OK, so the next part we're about to get on to is where the real impact is definitely seen within the game. And there are two choices you can go down here when it comes to adding mods into the game, which bring in effectively what we call shaders. Now, what are shaders? Shaders is a tool which is used as a graphical engine, effectively to take the uh, imagery and data that's within Minecraft and recreate that drawing of that image that you see on the screen. So what it will do is some of them will take away that very blockiness that you might see, very harsh uh, imagery that you see, and you can tailor it to exactly how you want it to look. The most common and most famous package I see, think that's probably around is Optifine. They, at the time of doing this video, Optifine don't have a 1.19.3 release available and it also needs a secondary mod to be installed as well alongside Fabric. Having said that, I will be doing a video on installing that at some point in the future. So stick, make sure you hit the subscribe and the like buttons and you'll get notified on that as well. However, for now, there is uh, two mods that are, are really good. There's actually a combination of three here. The first one here is Iris which is a mod which allows compatible uh, Optifine shaders to work within the game. And it is the light engine, so you won't see necessarily a lot of changes in your game without the shaders as well. But this is definitely the sort of like one of those core functions that you're going to need. When you download and install this, um, so we're gonna go, yeah, when you go down and do the download, let's go through this now. And what we actually want to do is we want to go and download the universal jar file there. And then what we're going to do is go through explaining how this installs. OK, so I'm just going to go into a little bit more in detail on how this is installed as part of your game. So what is important in this one is when you run this file, and you can do this now before we do anything with the other files, come in here and select your game version again, make sure you've got the correct one. And we're gonna be installing this alongside Fabric. So you don't want the standard standalone Iris install. You want to come over here and press the Fabric install. It'll already have the directory there. Hit the install and what it will do is it will go through downloading and installing that onto your computer. There we go, download is complete and it's all installed, done. And one thing I forgot to mention is that when Iris installs, it will also install a package called Sodium. The two work together to create the, the light engine and the optimization that you want to see. The one that I also recommend that you install alongside this is Phosphor, which is uh, written by the same people who do Sodium. So again, hit the download button for that and download that and that'll all end up in your menu bar down the bottom here. So you've now got the cause of your shader engine and optimization for the game now installed. Now, the next thing what we want to do is actually get some shaders. 
there are a whole host of shaders out there that you can actually use some of the some of the far more popular and well known than others bsl are one of those really well known shaders and the ones that i've actually been showing or showing off in this particular game or in this video so down here as you can see can be downloaded and installed with either optifine or iris and that would go through the instructions that i'm talking about here so again you can go in here hit the download button download that and we now have a whole load of mod files that are downloaded and installed on our computer okay i was getting a little bit of self ahead there when i said they're actually installed eh, well no um, we've downloaded them but we haven't actually installed them into the right area on the game now uh, for them to actually be used and the way we're actually going to do that is go up to installations again we've got our fabric loader here and we're going to click on the little folder sign just here and what that will do is then open us up into the minecraft folder so thanks to minecraft we now have our minecraft folder open on our computer where the install is and what we want to do is go down and find a folder called mods don't worry if you've got a lot less folders than this this is where i've had lots of other things installed in my game at other times just go into this mods folder and when you initially go in here you'll probably find that you've only got things like uh, sodium and where's the other one i think that normally does and iris i think you probably find there's only those two in there what you want to do is go to your computer's download page where your browser downloaded all of those mods and you want to copy over the jar files into this folder you don't want to install or copy over the installers however so if you was to follow the list that i've actually done you'll see that we have a total of 11 items in there you'll also notice that i don't have the shaders in here either so let's just run down these and give you a quick rundown of what we've actually got so we've got the fabric api we've got free cam we've got iris we've got the item swapper we've got lightmatica we've got maulib mini hub mod menu phosphor the replay mod and sodium you shouldn't have anything else in your folder at this point okay so the shaders the next part go back to your minecraft folder which is that one scroll down a bit further and you will find this shaders pack folder go into here and copy and paste in your bsl zip file this isn't a jar file or anything else like that it's a zip file don't extract it leave it in there just as a zip file don't worry about if you don't see these other files in here you won't even see this the first time this little text file here um, this is where you put your shaders so that iris can then use them okay so we're done all the files are in the right folders and we're ready to start minecraft modded with all of our mods now actually in the right stores when you first hit the play button don't be surprised if it takes a lot longer to load than normal that's perfectly normal some of the mods need a little bit of setting up and configuring themselves and you don't always get information on the screen you are loading quite a few at lot if the game crashes and is not running properly then what i suggest you do is go back to some of the mods make sure you've got them all in the right folders have an unzipped them or anything else like this um, and then if worst case what you can do is take them all out Go back start with fabric again on its own and then just add one file at a time starting with the libraries going down them in the order in which i've suggested that we actually download them so having said that let's get into minecraft and see what it looks like so here we are we're in minecraft and we're definitely running modded because down the bottom here it says 1.19.3 fabric and we have a total of 68 mods installed that's all the little sections and features within them so some of those mods are a pack of mods and features that are all built within them together straight away you should be able to see we have this mods uh, button right in the middle and let's go into this this is mod menu so let's click on that and you can see straight away we have a long list of mods that are actually installed so this is a really good sign you should see something like this um, you'll have Minecraft, which is obviously the base game. So let's go down. We've got Freecam, 
Iris, Open Swapper, Lightmatica, Matlib. Um, we've got the mini hard mod menu itself. Obviously, it's working because it's here. Phosphor, the replay mod, and sodium. So that's fantastic. They're all installed, and that shows that they're actually running. If you're interested in getting into the replay mod and wondering where on earth it is, it's this little button here you can go into. But let's go and have a look at the game and see what we actually got. So here we are, we're in Minecraft, in our world, and, well, it all looks pretty normal right now, doesn't it? Doesn't look massively different. Hmm, what happened? There's a few clouds, a few bits and pieces. This is a world that, as I said, that I've used before, and I use this just for a little bit of experimentation. So let's give this a go. As you can see, I'm in creative mode at the moment. So let's just pop ourselves down here and I'm going to put myself into survival mode. So my first trick is going to be the little free can mod. So we're going to do that. We're going to hit F4. Ooh, I've ended up inside my face. And there we can see very quickly that one is working. No problem at all. I can go miles away. I can go and have a peek around down underground. And I'm still in survival mode. Look at that, press F4, we're back. No problem there. Okay, mini HUD, is that working? Yes, it is. As you can see up in the top left-hand corner, let's move that into a position where it's a bit easier to see against the blue background. I've got a little display that is completely customizable by holding down the H key and pressing C. And you can go through here and learn all about the different things that you can turn on and off in there. The other great thing that I love about it is the fact that you can turn on the light levels. So holding down the H key and in my case pressing L, we can then see the light level on the ground so that we know where to light up. Now you might say, well, it's really sunny. Why is this not 15? Well, it's the light level with lights applied, not the sky light color. So when it's pitch black a bit later on in this game, that's the light levels we'll have in the game. So that's really, really useful. OK, so what's the next one we want to check? The next one we're going to check is the item swapper. And we can do that by pressing the R key normally. However, I have shaders installed. So I've had to go in and change my key mappings for that. So I'm actually going to be pressing the Y key. And as you can see, I now have a list of all the different items that are in my inventory pop up down the bottom here. So you can see I've got apparently I've got 64 cooked pork two bits of chicken in different places and some bread so let's have a look and actually see what we've actually got and yep actually we've got loads of cooked pork we've got bits of chicken and did i say there was a bit of bread somewhere ah i bet it's in my shulker box ah that's a sneaky one so this is another one of those ones that we can use. So if I hold the shift key, look at that. It can even see what's inside my shulker box, which is a piece. Sorry about the thunderstorm. So if I normally wanted to have that piece of bread, I'd have to go all the way in there to get that. So let's do this again. I seem to have scared the gods by this magical Minecrafting wizardry that I'm doing. So I'm going to press Y. We're going to go up to a piece of wood and let go. And look at that. I now have a tasty piece of bread in my hand that I can eat, that I've managed to get out of my shulker box. How fantastic is that as a tool? That's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. That, yep, I think I better move on before the gods uh, strike me down with the lightning. Okay, so now the sky's cleared up and the mods and uh, the, the, the uh, Minecraft gods seem to be a little bit happier with me. Let's move on and try the next one. The next one is Lightmatica, and we can do that by pressing the M key. And as I said, I'm not going to go into massive amounts of details about this, but this just shows that it's actually installed and running OK. We've got all our schematic options and bits and pieces there, and there'll be other videos out there that you can actually go away and actually see that to see how that works. So that's fantastic. But the thing I think you're probably all waiting for is the shaders. Yep, let's make this background look a lot better than it does right now. So how do we do that? OK, let's hit the escape key and we're going to go into our options and our video settings. Now, this 
we now get this gray background screen which i really like compared to optifine because it actually means you can see what's going on in the background and what it's going to look like so over here we have lots of different controls you can go through all these yourself individually checking out what you've actually got and as you go over them little pop-up boxes come up to tell you what each one of them actually mean you can actually change the quality you can put clouds in of different types all sorts of different bits and pieces it's, it's absolutely fantastic what you can actually do so go through those and we'll have a look shader packs that's what we're really interested in so what we're going to do is we're going to be using our new 8.2.01 bsl shader which was the one that we said would work with this version so we're going to pop up here and click enable click on that shader and then down the bottom here we're going to click apply and magically the whole background changes and you're probably looking at it and thinking oh it's all a bit washed out isn't it well that's because it's got gray tint over it at the moment so we can click done on all of these go back to the game and it still looks a bit gray because it's a bit dark out there isn't it what yeah that is a bit oh yeah oh that looks a bit nicer down there there we go so yes it's a pack and you can go in and change all the settings for it to change how it actually looks and as you can see i've got a little shadow out there i'm pointing at the screen with my hand but there we go it's over there we've got lovely water we've got a beautiful sunset going on here right now looks absolutely fantastic so you can go in and change your shader settings to how you like them and how you prefer them to see this is a little bit gray and washed out so i might go in there and do a few little tweaks just to make it look a little bit better So a few minutes later we have a few tweaks to the shader pack and we get the colors looking much richer a bit more saturation in here it's looking far far better than it was before when we just loaded it by default as i said go in and tweak around there are some great videos out there and what i will also do is put my values for this this shader pack in the description below so that you can use it as well in your world as too so there we go this looks fantastic and looks so much brighter and nicer to walk around in i think i think you'd agree looks absolutely fantastic well that's it for this video i hope you've enjoyed watching this um, i'll be doing follow-up videos following on from this which also go into some of the mods in more details also look out for my let's play through world in my modded world where i've got a brand new world which i've started off and i've got mods and things in that and I'll also be doing my own mods as well. Yep, that's it. I'm going to be writing my own mods and showing them off to you as well. They'll all be free of charge for you to be able to download and use yourself. And you can interact with me and suggest ideas and things that we could do with it. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. And I better go because it's now raining. See you later. Bye. Yep, so five minutes. Zombie dying behind me. Get out of the screen. Die already. Really? Come on, get on with it, guys. You're interrupting my video in. That's it. Look, puff. <laughs> Off you go. There we go. Right, here we go. Three, two, one.